Today, I'm chatting to the wonderful Horrid Henry creator, Francesca Simon, plus a reading from the latest book, Horrid Henry, Up, Up and Away. Hello, and on today's video, we are privileged, privileged creator of Horrid Henry with us, Francesca Simon. Hello, Francesca. Hello, everyone. And this is Louis, who's also oh. saying hello. Oh, oh hello, Louis. He's wow. a He's a Tibetan Spaniel, he particularly he enjoy being on camera, but so I don't know how long we'll, we'll keep him in shot. <laughs> no, I get two for the price of one. Hurrah. You do. You do. They're, they're. Oh, how very cute. Is Louis the source of much of your inspiration then, Francesca? Uh, inspiration <laughs> for yawning. Oh. oh, so how have you been finding these crazy times? Has it been inspiring you to write more? Because obviously now we can't all get out much. We're indoors all the time. Is, has that been conducive to you penning loads of it's books? It's been the opposite, actually. No, really? I find it really hard to work. My concentration is very poor. Ah, so there's <laughs> no more Horrid right. Henry's in the offing in your house as we speak. No, not not yet, though I'm aware that Horrid Henry's lockdown might be quite interesting because you combine that with Horrid Henry's homeschooling. Horrid Henry is so amazing. My boys absolutely love him. Let's rewind to the beginning. How did Horrid Henry become born, as it were? <laughs> yes. Well, Horrid Henry started, as all my ideas start, when I'm not like expecting to get an idea. Because right. You might lose Louis. Um, Hi, Louis. I was thinking about families because my friends, I had one child and my friends were all starting to have two. And I noticed that my friends were kind of talking about their children as like the good child and the bad child. And that intrigued me very much that it was, everybody was kind of open about it. Like who was the good one, who was yes. the bad one. And I just, someone asked me once, why didn't I write a book about somebody horrid? And I love alliteration. So I said, oh, well, Henry was horrid. Everyone said so. And that literally was the beginning. It was a one-off story. And I never imagined it would be more than one story. It was just a little idea about these two brothers and sibling rivalry, because I'm the eldest of four children. And um, yeah, it, it kind of blossomed from there. And I have quite a sharp sense of humor about families, because they are like the perfect comedy setup. Oh, totally. Who's all family? The, it's normal. No one. But also the, the classic comedy situation is a group of disparate people trapped. And a together. family is all these people who haven't really, except for the parents, but, you know, the, the people who have not chosen to be together are suddenly trapped together. That's and, why you've got to do Horrid Henry in lockdown. I probably even do. <laughs> I like probably that. do. Um... But I, I would need to, uh, yeah, no, I have, I have thought about it because it's an, it is an obvious idea because he, of course, would be monstrous. Yeah, and can you imagine homeschooling That's Horrid the title. Henry? Homeschooling Horrid But Henry. of course, the other thing is that since he just loves lying on the couch and reading and eating crisps and watching television. So for yeah. him, part of lockdown is so lazy and thinks everything outdoors is poisonous. So part, he's probably incredibly well suited to never leaving the house or yeah, in fact, never leaving the sofa. He Funny you should say that. My oldest son is a real homebody. And the other day I was like, should we go to the park? And he's like, no. And I was like, what's wrong with you? We're in depends. lockdown. It just you should be, yeah, it. we haven't used that all of our government allotted walks at all. So, you know, if you want someone else, Francesca, have them <laughs> take Louie out. So was, was the story a book or no, was it? No, oh, it's the actual, the very first Horrid Henry story. Horrid Henry's Perfect it, Day. It appeared in Horrid Henry, the very first Horrid Henry book. I mean, what happened is they actually asked me to write a book, a little story for younger children. Oh, I so see. I wrote Horrid okay. Henry. And they rejected it, saying it was it was too difficult. But of course, the funny thing is now with the Horrid Henry early readers, they've all suddenly become perfect for that. Yes, because we've got those as well. I had a brilliant, brilliant editor, and she said, well, this isn't right for what I've asked, but I, I like what you've done, so let me see if I can think about how we could make it work. And she said, what about if we just make it longer, make more stories? So that's why it's the format that it is, the four stories, that length, no, I promise you that no thought went wow. into this whatsoever. So, when I, so no, but whenever friends of mine are starting to do series, I always say, um, you will be attached 
to this format, make sure, make sure that, you know, you're happy with the length and you're happy with the characters because you, that's it. I mean, you know, they are that, that length because of that one story, which then got turned on. That's just brilliant. How organic. You didn't really it was totally to organic. to hard and think it through. It just all came together. It all just came together. Um, uh, yeah, That's it did. Awesome. It and did, then yeah. you've had a TV show, the movie. I mean, Horrid Henry is a phenomenon now. You just, you wouldn't have thought it from that one short story. Never. No. And if anyone had ever asked me, you see, but if anyone ever said to me, come up with a series, I would go totally blank. I can only really come up with characters in one story. And then I might look at it and think, are there more stories? I didn't think there were more stories with Horrid Henry. Um, wow. But I knew I had to come up with, you know, for that first book, three more, which was terrifying. <laughs> and, and now I've written, I've written 100. I've written 100 <laughs> stories. To think that at number three, you were like, oh no, seriously? No, that, that was serious. I mean, it took me a while to come up with those stories. I thought, well, phew, I've exhausted this. And then like <laughs> a year later, my publisher said, um, what about a few more stories? And so it, 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 took, it grew very, very slowly. Yeah. Um, so how people, long has it been? What, when was the first one? 1993. Wow. Hard, so hard, Henry's like a man now with children. Ah! <laughs> yeah, 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 grandchildren. No, he'll always be the same age. I think, no, 1994, 1994 was when the first one came out. So we had yes. our 25th anniversary. And the 25th <laughs> book was, you know, is Horde Henry Up, Up and Away, which was published uh, last year. Which I'm going to be reading uh, a bit of later. Horrid Henry takes to the skies. So, how do you come up with all these new ideas if you were already stumped so early on? Well, I only wrote one a year, so I had time to sort of think about what I was doing. But also, I keep an ideas notebook, which right. I would really recommend for anybody who wants to write. So, I would look at my, just, I would just jot down little tiny ideas. Also, I was kind of, I asked myself lots of questions. And sort of things that would happen, my son was about three or four when I started writing them and he's young, he was the youngest in his year. So I remember he came home one day kind of upset because everybody was losing their teeth but him because he was the youngest in the class. So I would go, okay, so what would happen if Horrid Henry wasn't losing teeth? Or my son would say, Could we have a jumble sale. And I thought, well, <laughs> what would Horrid Henry sell? And I thought his brother, that would be a jumble. <laughs> So, you know, a lot of it is asking questions, just being alert to things. I mean, one of my funniest stories, I think, is Horrid Henry meets the Queen. And I got that idea because I was sitting on the tube and I saw this picture of this child screaming. So, of course, I picked it up. And it turns out that Prince Charles had helicoptered into this poor child's nursery in the country. <laughs> and this kid started screaming, I hate Prince Charles, make him go away. <laughs> That's really funny. And I thought, well, what would happen if, or if the queen came to Henry's school? And I, so, you know, again, asking myself the question, I thought, yeah, well, yeah. Henry would want to know how many televisions and I have had. my characters. And then I say, what do they want? And what's stopping them getting what they want? So Henry yeah. is, of course, being kept away from the queen. And he's desperate to ask this question. So that's the sort of tension in the story is, and of course, his brother was chosen to present the bouquet of course of course oh, so he sabotages that yeah so, uh, so let's <laughs> talk up, up and away quickly because i'm just talking and, and we're nearly out of time um how did the idea for up up and away come about well i was thinking about plane journeys and kind of saving up everybody's what i often do is collect stories from people like tell me about the worst plane ride you ever had and of course my own experiences of traveling with you know, the one time we ever got upgraded is the one time that Josh on a flight to LA got a violent stomach. But, <gasps> I mean, he developed it. You know how kids suddenly get sick. So mm. four or five hours into this flight, you know, oh my God. So which is why I always started, because we brought extra clothes. We brought two sets of clothes for him, but no extra clothes for us. Never make that mistake again. So we were having to go and wash our clothes in the sink in the... Oh, no. It was, it was like the fly cannot... And we'd been upgraded to business class for the first time ever. Oh, no. It was, it was just one of those things. You, I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to live long enough to touch down in L.A. So when we got there, <laughs> Josh was, I think, in a nappy. 
and I was in, I think, my husband's sweatshirt and a soft <laughs> skirt. I mean, it was just one of those things that you just, but that doesn't happen. But I just wanted to have like the kid who sits behind you and kicks. And that Henry would be horrible because his the, the joke of that story is, of course, that Henry thinks that that being on an airplane he's never been before is like first class. In fact, I modeled it on Emirates first class, you know, oh, just wow. like unbelievably plush. And his parents, you know, are in the back row of cattle class in the middle. So everything is horrible. And endless treats at his beck and call so he imagines all everyone is flying like the vision of, of emirates first class and then discovers and endless treats at his beck and call so he imagines all everyone is flying like the vision of, of emirates first class and then discovers the, the the truth about cattle class so he just goes mad and just anyway he's he's every nightmare so it was <laughs> funny to write about him trying to get upgraded <laughs> when you're writing so uh, you must be sort of laughing away and he gets into all these scrapes and i do that and... do you actually have um, a favorite? i really love um i always like my newest one and i actually really yeah. enjoyed um up up in a way it it has a kind of lightness to it and it's really it's really funny I like, I'm, I more have favorite stories. I mean, I really love Horrid Henry Meets the Queen. And the other one I really love is, is uh, Horrid Henry, um, the one, let me just, oh gosh, you see, I, I wrote it so long ago. The one where he does, well, the, one, the Horrid Henry's Jumble Sale, where he sells right. Peter, which I think is so funny because Peter agrees to be sold because he gets 5p or something. <laughs> <laughs> Which you could so imagine with young kids. I can totally imagine my Well, you kids. know how they really like the money because he asks Peter if he would like to be sold. And when Peter discovers that he'll get 5p, he agrees very happily. Brilliant. So he hasn't been tricked. He's, he's gone along with this. And yeah. Mar Margaret buys him to be her slave, to be her minion so he can fan her. I mean, it's just fabulous, but but oh. he's thrilled because he's got rid of Peter because Henry never thinks more than one second ahead. It's why no. it's funny. Yes, it's that's exactly it, isn't it? He, his mind is always wearing a million miles per hour before sense catches up. Well, there is no forethought um, because if there yeah. was, the books would actually be not very funny and would be kind of malign. Yeah. You know, he only ever plots when he's got really good um, reasons. It has been great chatting to you. Thank you so much, Francesca. Thank you for having me on, Connie. It's a pleasure. And uh, I am very privileged and honoured now because I'm going to be reading a bit of Horrid Henry up, up and away. Meet the gang. Henry, Peter, Mum and Dad. Horrid Henry up, up and away. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Horrid Henry could scarcely believe it. After years of him begging and pleading and pleading and begging, Horrid Henry's mean, horrible parents were finally taking him on an aeroplane. It was a dream come true. Mum and Dad's idea of a great holiday was staying at home and weeding the garden. Or worse, forcing him to help weed the garden. Or even worse, camping in a smelly, mosquito-filled swamp without TV or computers or anything. Yuck, blah, gag. These weren't holidays. These were organised cruelty to children. One happy day, when Henry was king, he'd make sure that kids decided where to go on holiday and any parent who so as much as whispered the words garden or camping or fresh air would get trampled by stampeding penguins. But now at last they were flying off on a real vacation to stay in a hotel with 12 huge pools, wave machines and room service and everything. It was like taking a holiday in heaven. Horrid Henry had never flown on an aeroplane, but he knew all about it. Stuck-up Steve had bragged about the flight he and rich Aunt Ruby had just taken. Your own cabin, complete with baskets filled with chocolates and crisps, luxury beds, flight stewards, your beck and call whenever you wanted more sweets or an extra burger or three. Non-stop ice cream and fizzy whiz drinks and TV and games, any food you liked brought to you with a snap of your fingers as you reclined in your fabulous comfy chair. Horrid Henry couldn't wait to be soaring through the air, watching every episode of Terminator, Gladiator or Skeleton Skunk. A huge bowl of chocolates by his side, a 
Best of all, his parents couldn't nag him to do his chores, finish his homework or turn off the TV. Not on a plane. He'd be free. In fact, maybe he could fly the plane. How hard could it be? He could ride a bike. Maybe he could do a few loop-the-loops while he was soaring through the clouds. Pilot Henry with an ejector seat for his younger brother, Perfect Peter. But would the flight be long enough to play every game and watch every episode? Henry hoped so. He couldn't wait to relax in his own mini palace in the sky. The only bad thing was that for some reason his nappy noodle, wormy worm, wibble wobble, poopy pants, poopsicle brother was coming too. Instead of being put out with the recycling. Horrid Henry scowled. He couldn't wait to slam the door shut on his private cabin so he wouldn't have to see the toady toad for the whole flight. At last, the great day arrived. After checking they had tickets and passports and then double checking they had tickets and passports and then triple checking they had tickets and passports, Henry, Peter, Mum and Dad finally arrived at the airport. Out of my way, worm, shrieked Horrid Henry, zooming to the departure gate on his Marvin the Maniac glidey glidey wheeled suitcase, crashing into the people and knocking over the duty-free displays. I've got a plane to catch. Don't be horrid, Henry, shouted Mum. Henry, get back here, shouted Dad. But horrid Henry ignored him. Why queue when paradise beckoned? He'd already wasted so much time waiting in line to check in, waiting in line for security and waiting in line to wait in line. Horrid Henry couldn't wait another second. He ran ahead and jumped onto the jet, pushing and shoving past everyone waiting to board. He had to make sure he got a window seat. He dashed through the plane door and stared. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Stuck up Steve had been telling the truth. There were the huge reclining seats with the massive TVs and fluffy pillows. And even better, there were plenty, which was still empty. Henry raced to bag one by the window. Horrid Henry sank into the leather chair. It was massive. There was the basket filled with chocolates and crisps, the bell to call the flight attendant, or should he say his own personal butler? And best of all, a ginormous TV screen all for him. Just look at all the channels on the remote control. Horrid Henry's thumbs itched to get started. It was even better than he'd hoped. But for some reason, Horrid Henry's parents didn't rush to bag their own mini palace. Instead, they stood in the aisle with Peter glaring staring at him. Hurry up, said Henry, or you won't get a seat. Henry, said Dad, we're not sitting here. Yeah, Henry, said Peter. What? Were they crazy? Was there somewhere even better? Maybe with a swimming pool and a ski slope? This is first class, said Mum. So, said Henry, scooping up a fistful of sweets. A flight attendant walked towards them, smiling. Hello, Welcome on board. I'm Greg, here to make your flight a great one. Then Greg caught sight of Henry's ticket. His smile vanished. He grabbed the sweets out of Henry's hand. Oi, said Horrid Henry, give those back. Move, said Grumpy Greg, and make it snappy. But I like it here, said Henry. He held onto the plush armrests. Get up now or there will be no TV during the flight, hissed Mum. Reluctantly, Henry got out of his king-size seat. Where they were going had better be good, he thought, scowling as he followed his parents down the aisle and through the curtain. A gruesome sight met his eyes. Stop! Let's go back, protested Henry. Henry's parents ignored him and carried on walking. Down, down, down they trudged. The seats got smaller and smaller and smaller. The aisles got narrower and narrower and narrower. Henry looked in horror at the cramped rows. Turn back! Turn back! Why are we going here? he shouted. Mum, Dad and Peter ignored him and continued squeezing down the tiny aisle to the second to last row of the seats in the middle by the toilets. Here, said Dad. This is nice and cosy, said Peter. Horrid Henry was shocked. He couldn't move. Was this some cruel joke? Had he been zapped into the zombie dimension? These postage stamp sized seats weren't even by a window. I can't sit here, screamed Horrid Henry. I'll suffocate. Sit down, ordered Grumpy Greg. He clicked his fingers and make it snappy. You're blocking the aisle. Reluctantly, Horrid Henry heaved himself into his teeny, tiny, lumpy, bumpy seat. Dad squeezed into his tiny seat. Mum squeezed into her tiny seat. Peter squeezed into his tiny seat. The holiday starts here, said Dad cheerfully. Buckle up. Across the aisle, a red-faced baby began to howl. Wah! And another. Wah! And another. Wah! Then Horrid Henry saw a terrible sight. 
Where's my TV? He wailed, kicking and hurling himself backwards in the seat. Uh Uh-oh, that flight is doomed to get worse and worse, isn't it? Horrid Henry Up, Up and Away is available for purchasing and reading right now. A huge thanks to Francesca Simon. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and spread the word. But for now, catch you next time. Bye.